Welcome to Disciple Talk. Yes, this is Disciple Talk, and today we have a special format for Disciple Talk today with a guest of ours, Dr. Jay Richardson of the North Carolina Baptist Convention. We're going to be talking about something that's very important in the life of the church, and that is our theme that we've adjusted to this year, which is Philippians 3.14, as it says, we press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. We're asking Dr. Richardson to help us with that theme by sharing from his wide experience and the many things that he's been involved in over the years. He is a veteran kingdom leader, a facilitator, a teacher, a coach, and has worked with many pastors and churches over the years across North Carolina, even this nation. So we just want to say welcome. <laughs> Dr. Richardson yeah. to Disciple Talk. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this. This is uh, always a pleasure to be with you, a good friend as well, and so I'm excited. And um, thank God that we have the opportunity to be able to share with others. Well, Dr. Richardson, tell us a little bit about your, your history and ministry and with the convention at this time, and we'll go further in our conversation. Well, I'm gonna try to shorten this up because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I started out in the pastorate many, many years ago. Uh, my first pastorate was in Jacksonville, North Carolina, in Camp Lejeune. Uh, there, when I was in the Marine Corps, got called to Desert Storm, and that's where ministry, pastoral ministry, started out for me. I've pastored uh, uh, a few churches uh, throughout the years. But the main calling is uh, when God called me to, first of all, he called me to work with the, the Raleigh Baptist Association. Uh, I came on board with them and uh, stayed with them for a little while and then went to the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. That was, uh, went with them back in 1996, uh, 97. So I've been with them for quite some time now. Uh, and uh, it's, it's been a journey. Uh, God has afforded me to, to do things, see things. If I could share just a tidbit of my testimony of how this all came about. When I first got saved, I, I went to visit my mom and I told my mom that I had given my life to Christ. And uh, for some reason, mom didn't believe me. She said, uh, come go to church with me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to church with mom and uh, after service was over, uh, her pastor steps down, mom standing on my left, the pastor standing in front of us and uh, the pastor looks at me, she looks at mom and she turns back and she looks at me again, then she looks at mom and she says, yes, yeah, he's saved and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she, she turned back and she looks at me and she says, you're going to travel all around the world preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus the Christ. I didn't have a clue what she was really talking about at that particular time. I had just given my life to Christ. Therefore, I, I, you know, I, I heard what she said, but I didn't really get it uh, until God started working in my, in my life and began the teaching ministry at my home church and then got called into uh, the pastoral ministry. But then a few years later, she said something to me that that I still didn't get, even though I had been saved for uh, a good while, I was in the pastor ministry. She says, many people are going to want you to pastor. You're going to want to pastor. You, you like pastor. And she says, but one thing I see God is calling you to be a pastor to pastors. Mm -hmm. And all what she has said, she said to me came to fruition. Uh, or the pastor said to me, came to fruition, and God has been using me for just about 40 years now. I've been doing ministry for 40 years, working with churches and pastors through uh, the Baptist Day Convention of North Carolina. That was a place where God put me to minister to our African-American churches, and he allowed me to do some great things throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Dr. Richardson, sharing that background is helpful because since we came into the association, the Raleigh Baptist Association and the convention, it was you who I first met mm -hmm. who has been so instrumental in, in giving me guidance as a pastor coming in and our church to be able to know the benefits, to know the things that we are able to resource 
as well as the contributions we are, can make as a new congregation. And for that, without your guidance and leadership, we would not be where we are today. And so your sharing with us today is so relevant to just where we are as a church. So as we look at what's going on today from your perspective, because you, you work with so many pastors around the state of North Carolina, you got a broad pulse on how things are going. What is the greatest challenge that you see churches are facing in the post-pandemic time in regard to pressing forward? Well, I hear many different um, pastors talk about how we're going to minister to the people now since the pandemic, mm -hmm. post-pandemic. And one of the things is a lot of people are not interested in coming back to a building, mm -hmm. but they still want to do church with their, with their church. That's one of the problems that they have, they're having. Now, what I always have said since the pandemic is that we have to learn how to do ministry more than just the traditional way mm -hmm. of doing that we have been accustomed to doing ministry. And I, I, I love to use the analogy. When you look at um, a place, a fast food place, they give you different options of how they can provide Okay. service for you okay. right they will give you the option to come into their facility and you can dine there with them and they will serve you or you can do takeout mm -hmm. you drive through mm -hmm. and you order your food you pick it up and you go on your way but the third way is that now they will deliver it to you mm. think about those three options now now, as we look at the church, the church has to move from the traditional mindset of how we've done church for so many years mm -hmm. to say, hey, we have to look at some new ways of doing church now, doing ministry. The future of the church is going to look very different than it did when you and I were going to church. When we grew up in church, when we came to church, when we started pastoring church, we knew that traditional way and we operated out of that because that was the norm. That was the, the customary way of doing church. But now it's different. Now, I've done uh, workshops on ministering to five generations in the church. No five generations. Again, when I was growing up in the church, it was basically parent and child, mm -hmm. two generations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you have five generations that are in the church. We have to learn how we're going to be able to minister to those five generations. When Jesus walked this earth, he ministered to everybody. Yes. He didn't leave anybody out. Yes. His, if we would learn how to follow his model, we have to learn how to minister to everybody and minister to them to where they are. Uh, you look at your Gen Z's, those are the younger generation mm -hmm. now that's in the uh, coming out of college and going into the workplace. Mm -hmm. They think differently than the way we think. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the millennials, they think differently than the way we think. You have the, the Gen Xers, they think differently. And then you have the boomers, and then you still have some of the traditionalists, the, uh, what they call the senior uh, adults, the senior saints now. So we have all of those different generations, so we have to learn how to minister to them. Every venue of the church is going to be different. Your geographical location is going to be different. It's all knowing who you have in your community and who you're reaching in the community. That's a big piece. That's what pastors say all the time. Uh, they, they ask me, Jay, how are we going to, wh what are you hearing? How are we going to minister to uh, people now during this post COVID? They said, a, a lot of my people, they still want to do Facebook Live or they want to do YouTube, mm -hmm. but they don't want to come back to the building. That's understandable. I think it was um, Tom Rayner that said 27% of the people are not, they're, they're, they're just not thinking about coming to church. Right. So we have to learn how to move uh, with the flow of our demographics as well as our younger generations. If we don't, we're going to wind up losing them. Mm -hmm. So we have to step up to the plate and we have to seek God first 
pray, seek him, and we have to come up with the, the strategies of how we're going to engage in our communities and reach these younger generations. That's so rich. We are celebrating this year, Dr. Richardson, 155 years of witness in the Raleigh area. Congregational Church is one of the more historic churches in Raleigh. Now what you just shared is so helpful. So I want you to go a little further in helping us because we're being challenged to do some of those things. We have a number of our precious seniors who, as you say, the pandemic is not going to allow them to come back. <clears throat> and then we had the challenge of the youth of the generation Z and X that we're trying to keep reaching and bring into the church. What, what can you tell us at Congregational Church as you talked about breaking traditional thinking and looking to the future? Can you go a little further with that? Well, I think one of the things when, as, I, as I've been with uh, North Carolina Baptist uh, State Convention for many, many years, I've, I've watched uh, the change uh, mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the years and how we've had to adapt. Again, all of us have been in that traditional mindset because that's the way we've been accustomed right. to church. But now we've had to look out and look into uh, the different ministries of churches and think about and strategize of how we can be able to help the local church. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's, that's North Carolina Baptist. That's the Baptist State Convention. That's what we are about. We are here to help you. And so we try to strategize and look at and survey, and we get feedback from pastors like yourself and other pastors around the state to tell us what's happening, like we're having this conversation now. Uh, I talk about this all the time with pastors. We're here to help you. We have many different um, ministries mm -hmm. yes. uh, f coming from the state convention to be able to help the local church. That's, what's all, that's what it's all about. You talk about, and I know we haven't got there, we'll get there later, but uh, uh, on mission together. Right. Uh, that's a part of it. That's why we're here. We're here to help you and to assist you. So go back again to your question. Pastors are saying, how can you help me to be able to take the church to the next level. Right, that's it. And so now it's coming together. One of the things that I always recommend is put you an advisory team together. Now, you, you, you gotta have a diversity. When I mean, what I mean by diversity is you can't have just a one age group of people. Mm -hmm. You need to have your younger generation. You need to have also, um, uh, a youth right. on that team. Right, right. Uh, so you need to have it, that diversity there because you're going to get feedback and you will know how to minister to those five generations in your, in your church. That's one way of doing it because they're going to give you feedback. As pastors, God didn't call us to know everything. He called us to be the leader, the under shepherd. And so now we are responsible for looking out into our congregation because guess what? We come to this building, mm -hmm. but this is just the building that houses the church. That's correct. Each and every one of us are the church. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we carry out the great commission. The great commission. And so if we're not carrying out the Great Commission, then we're missing the mark. So now I have to hear from the members. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want as a young person to see happen in church? How can I minister to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how can we help you to become a strong disciple for Jesus the Christ? Mm -hmm. Now, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Discipleship is one of the most important pieces in the local church. But I think, and this is just me talking, we are missing the mark on discipleship okay. and bringing young people to the table. Nowadays, they don't have to come to the building to do discipleship, right? That's right. We have different platforms that we can still do discipleship with them. But we have to have something that's that's going to meet their needs. Young people want to know, how is this going to help me at school, mm -hmm. at the workplace, mm -hmm. 
in my community, in my own personal life. And we have to be able to break it down for them. Uh, I have a good, good friend that I've done some podcasts with uh, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. I won't call his name because mm -hmm. I don't know if he will want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, he, he, he told me one time, he said, he said, I have two services. I have one uh, early morning service uh, for, the, for the older people, and I have a second service in the morning for the younger people. And he says, when I get to the younger people, he says, I, I, I can't teach them like I teach the older people because they, they, they know Bible a lot right. better than the younger people. And he said, one morning I was teaching, preaching to the, uh, to the, um, to the younger people. And he, he says, I was preaching about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and he said, I asked them, do, do you all uh, know the three Hebrew boys? They said, no, Pastor, who, 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 who are the three Hebrew boys? Right? <laughs> and so he said, I had, to, I had to take my time. I had to break that down. And I had to make it relevant to their own personal lives. So that's one thing that we're going to have to come to grips with. Uh, and learning how to minister to them on their level. That is a point of, of interest and challenge at Congregational Church, communicating to the younger people. And I have to say as a pastor, that's a challenge for me. Dealing with the younger generation, dealing with my own children and grandchildren in terms of encouraging their Christian life and following Jesus and wherever they are. But you know, I want to stay on the youth just for a little bit mm -hmm. longer uh, in this session of Disciple Talk because in your going around the state of North Carolina this year and after the pandemic, and still here, but it, you know, the way it is, mm -hmm. do you see that that's the, has the church lost youth more or are youth more involved, whether it's on the platforms of technology or social media or coming back to church. What have you seen in regard to how youth have responded to being continually involved in the church since the pandemic? What I've heard is that many of the youth are falling away because it's not relevant to them anymore. Okay. Now, I've heard, I've heard I know one pastor that I've spoken with and he's told me, he says, he says, I had to learn how to listen to my young people. Okay. And he says, when we, when we come to church on Sunday mornings, he says, the youth says, we want to do Sunday, Sunday school at the coffee shop. Okay. He, he, he said at first, I didn't, I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you know, like we say, you know, we're not, we're not accustomed to this. This is a new generation. This is a new day, new time. Things are different now. And he says, but I listen to them. And he says, they will go to that shop, wherever the location is. They would do their Bible study. Mm -hmm. And then after they come to worship. And he said that has worked out so well because they get to do something that they enjoy mm -hmm. and they are relating to their own generations. Uh, and he says they're growing stronger and stronger in their relationship with Christ. Wow. You know, the future of the church is dependent on the youth. Exactly. And in a time like we're in where the youth are facing the, the, the challenges that we never even thought about when we look at our societal rapid changes, morally, socially, politically, economically, and just maneuvering that. I, I kind of want us to wind down on this session of Disciple Talk, still honing in on um, your experience in working with all the churches in regard to what would you say to the pastor myself and others listening, the leadership of our church that's listening to this, to make sure what would be the number one thing we need to be doing to reach our youth. And I, I know I, yeah. I want to go back to what I said earlier. The number one thing, okay. bring your youth in. Okay. Talk with them. Listen to them. Hear what they're saying. Because they're going to tell you what the needs are. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you what they're dealing with, what they're going through. 
and how it can relate to them and helping them out. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing is to be able to bring a group of your youth in, young people in, and ask them the question, okay. how can we help you? What about the youth that's unchurched? What, what, I mean, they, they don't know the Lord. They're not in church. They, they never were. Do you sense that part of the infusion in the days ahead, how, how do we reach these unchurched youth? When we look at the youth violence today in our society, the, I talked about this in a sermon about authority and no respect and all this, but w what can we do to reach that segment of the youth that's not, not a generation ain't grow up listening to the hymns in the church and parents didn't have the hymns in the church. What do you see, Dr. Richard? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> the way I look at it, youth can reach youth. Okay. If we learn how to disciple our youth that's in the church, teach them how to build relationships. See, Back in the day, we, we've been taught that if you get saved, then you, you interact and you mingle with saved people. Now, I'm going to ask the question, it's a rhetorical question, okay. but is that what Jesus did? Did Jesus just mingle with his disciples only? Mm. No, he didn't. Zacchaeus is one. Mm. And they were upset with him. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees and Sadducees were upset with him because he, they called him a wine bibber. And, you know, he was um, interacting with people that were not a part of the synagogue. So I say, train your youth how to build relationships. Your strong youth that's in Christ. They know him. They know Jesus. They love Jesus. And they build relationship with the un say people draw them in uh, I'm sure you remember the theme that was out a couple years back who's your one who's your one yes I do remember so if they can if they can go by that same model choose one person that you can disciple okay. as a young person now they have to be taught we just can't throw them out there and say hey go reach people they have to be taught mm -hmm. and that's one of the downfalls we're not teaching Mm -hmm. our young people. Mm -hmm. Even if you find a, a, a young youth minister mm -hmm. that you can bring him up under your wing, mm -hmm. teaching, teach him or her, and allow the young people to go out and build a relationship, just one. Back in the day, uh, my home church, and I'm, it's, it's, it's all over, but my home church did this, each one reach one. Okay. So we asked one youth to reach one unchurched youth one and allow God and the Holy Spirit to do the rest. Amen. And then we have our, our prayer team to be praying for them, undergirding them. Amen. Amen. Our prayer team here has been very instrumental in leading our church in the prayer, even during the, con uh, the, the pandemic. I think that's what sustained us. But, but as we wind down on this session, will you stay with us for another session of Disciple Talk? Of course. Of course. Well, let, let me kind of wind down with this that'll segue us into part two for next week. Uh, leadership. Mm. Leadership. Some leadership in churches has been divided by the pandemic in terms of what should be the priority. And I'm throwing this out for us to kind of begin to set the, set the tone for next week's session. Some leaders are trying to prioritize what's most important in the church, in our local churches. I think congregational church is, not, is just in the same part as others. We've had our differences, we've had our issues, but in terms of leadership, we have sought to look to the future. We're a congregation that is in transition and is looking to the future. The future doesn't disrespect the past, but it can't live in the past. What do you say as we close in the next two minutes on Disciple Talk? 
How do we balance the past and the future as leaders leading the church? Yeah, I think one of the things that we have to look at as leaders is, again, as you just alluded to, we're not disrespecting the past and we're not saying the past is no good. Of course, our history is always going to be good. Amen. The gospel never changes, mm -hmm. but our methodology mm -hmm. has to change in the way that we look at doing church. Again, you said it earlier, if we're not careful, we're going to lose the young people. They're not going to want to have anything to do with the church. As I look at stats, and I've looked at some of the stats that's saying that 4,000 plus people leave the church, mm -hmm. not on an annual basis, that's on a daily basis, mm -hmm. because of what we are trying to continue bringing mm -hmm. the old into the new. Jesus said what? You can't put old wine, wine, wine skin, right? <laughs> We're trying to put the old into the new mm. and it can't handle it. So now we have to again go back and we have to seek God and pray, asking him for the new vision. Okay. He says without the vision, people perish. And we have to stop trying to be isolated in doing things solo. Okay. We have to learn again on mission together. So we have to come together just like you and I, we do this all the time. We have a group of pastors that we meet with That's and right. we strategize and we brainstorm and we study and we learn from each other. It's collective IQ. Well, that's a blessing. Can we come together? Can we learn from each other? And again, Baptist State Convention in North Carolina has tons of resources for us to do that. Absolutely. I, I resource pastors all the time. You know, I'm all about resourcing. That's what I do. Up and down, back and forth the state, uh, through the state of t resourcing, whatever that may be. Whatever the need is, we want to try to help the church to meet those needs. Ministry mm -hmm. for the pastors, for the leaders in the church, for the deacons in the church, for the trustees in the church, whatever those ministries are, that's our responsibility to try to help you. Absolutely. To Absolutely. work together. That's why we're on mission together. That's right. And as we wind down, I want to say to those, we want to then thank Dr. Richardson for being with us in this first segment. We're going to ask them to come back for next week and be a part of session two. This is the key. Listen to what he's sharing with us, whether you're a congregational church or ones who listen to Disciple Talk. The key is pressing forward into Christ likeness. This is the Disciple Talk, and we're having a conversation with Dr. Jay Richardson. We'll see you next week. God bless you.